Trump 15. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the left-hand side. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred ninety nine dollars or twenty two percent, and you can get it for one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars or thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee. So you know, no matter which one you pick, you can pick six months, you can pick a year. Bottom line, if it works for you, stay out to the twenty eight days. That's great. You keep it. For some reason, it doesn't. You just cancel it. Bottom line, it doesn't cost you anything, and just getting the newsletter itself, folks, okay? Basil has about, I believe there's 12 archives out there, so you can understand how the Chapman Wave works and how we ride this wave each and every day. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Good. And that nice discussion you just had with Tim, he does some terrific work, for sure. Yes, and it's just different, which is really cool. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, it's, big time. it's the way you analyze it. It's great. Right. So I want you to show you this chart here. This is the Dow, and there's a technique that I, I've used very often. I've used it for years, and it basically looks at a price that goes up, and then it starts to come down, and then it makes it lower highs and much lower lows. Okay. And then all of a sudden, it finds some support and it spins around. It makes either a cup or a V-shaped pattern, and it takes out that uh, upper trend line resistance. It's like an expanding cone. I see that, yeah. And if it does that, it can have a strong move up. It can even go back to the previous high. So this chart here, we are right on the cusp. We're at this moment right here. You can see, and there's a technique that I developed years ago that I call Chapman Wave Inside Track. If it's on the uh, if it's on on the way up, I call it the inside track repellent zone because once it breaks that, it then becomes a propellant zone. And if you see it on the way down, in fact, this I, I took it out just to it was getting a little messy. But I would have had the two parallel lines here and this expanding cone. There would have been a propellant zone. So everything about the Dow's low that was made on uh, Friday, the tw the I think it was the 27th, uh, the 20. Let me just double check that. I think it was the uh, 20. I should know by now. Yeah, it was the 27th. Had on balance volume give us a nice turnaround. The only thing that was missing for me was that the VIX index didn't go up into the high 20s, and we didn't have a huge sell off on that Monday morning um, to have a nice reversal intraday. That to me would have been a confirmation that 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 could have been the low for this particular part going into the end of the year. Right at this particular point, I think it's a low. I've got a lot of information that says the way the market's moving, the way the different sectors are moving, this could this could hold very well if in the next couple of days any pullback holds about maybe a third of the way down um, on a pullback and then makes a new leg up, that would be very positive. So as I was looking at the market at the end of the day on Monday, I said, you know, I love the action in some of the areas, and I, we've, there are certain stocks that had fabulous moves, and we just kept missing them because either they went up too sharply or uh, it just wasn't quite what we were looking at the time. But one of the stocks that I really enjoyed uh, w watching the movement move up and down and then the fact that it pulled back on that Friday and then going into the Monday was Microsoft. Uh, it had very good earnings. Uh, it, it fitted. It's a Dow stock. It's an S&P stock. It's a Nasdaq stock, and it's in the XLK, which is the S&P Select um, um, Tech sector. So we were very lucky. We got this at 3:38 uh, the nice. very next day, Tuesday. Nice, Basil. Great move. At, yeah, and it's trading at 3:61. But I, what I really wanted to show you is. Some of the techniques that I use. This is what, if anyone subscribes to my newsletter or goes to those um, webinars that that you were talking about, re referring to all the techniques that I discuss in detail. One of the things I look at is there's a pattern that we call the dreaded H. One of the reasons I call it the dreaded H is that you get a straight line up, straight line down. You get a cup formation. You get an arch formation. When there's a mix, it's red because when there's a mix and the rally goes to a peak A or a B and then fails and takes out that left side low, 
that can be very devastating. And we've seen that, I, I'm just using Microsoft. You can see these arches, there's one that turned around. But what's really positive about this particular pattern, and that's another reason why I said, if this works out, this could be really good, is that when this H takes out the left side low, but immediately turns around and the technical start to improve, if it closes even one bar above the arch high, that says it could go all the way to the left side high. Well, look at this. We, we got in just over there. And look what happened. It made an arch. That's that dreaded H. But this one was successful because the rule of, the, of this H pattern is that within two, maybe three bars, but usually I like it two bars, it must close above that left side low. And then you've got to see the technicals give really good signals. So in the weekly chart, you can see there's this little H pattern, a little arch. Peak D was in the Chapman wave. We're always looking at peak D. That's the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. Your objective is to get to a peak D. Um, and in this particular instance, look what happened. It closed above the very week we got in. It closed above that arch high. Yes. So that immediately says to me, 366.78 would be the target. But because the monthly chart is in a rising trend, um, there's a chance that it just gets into this inside track on the upside. So if you go just a little bit above it, and then we'll see what happens. That's where I expect some kind of a digestion. So we're at 361. We did it at 362 today. Uh, 366.78, that area is, is the... Uh, then there's another technique that I use where I try to find the midpoint. I call it the plumb line. And that's where the number of bars on the left side from the high to the low should equal the number of bars on the right side. Well, sometimes the pattern is very obvious and sometimes it's not. In this particular instance, I use this little peak right here as my the number of bars on the left side to the number of bars on the right. And that takes you to this week, maybe next week, but on, a, on, a, on a, the usage of my techniques where I use this dashed green line, I call it the Chapman wave inside wedge, target resistance line, everything lines up that this week we should get really close to the 366 level. So there are a whole bunch of techniques that we were using, and this is the first time in a long while that um, the I have to wait for the end of the week, but so far the MACD is cross positive. I needed to see that. And there's another technique that I have, I've had webinars on where the nine period moving average is above the 14, and as long as it's holding, it can keep you in the trade for a long time. So look, it never did. I wonder if I can do this. I'll do this real quickly now. Look, here, here's my chart. I'll go to the weekly. I'm going to get out of that one here. All right. Oh, I don't know if I can find it. Oh, there it is. So in this particular instance, if I'm looking at, uh, I just click, click. I'll go to Microsoft, click it, and I'll press weekly chart. And you'll see, here's the green moving average, and that green moving average didn't go pink, it's still green. So that's another technique that I like to use, and this one so far is working very nicely. And folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see right at the top, newsletters. You hit newsletters, it's right on the second one down, opening call, hit it, and you're off to races. Basil, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. Every too. Tuesday and Stay Thursday, right Tim or